Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another video here on the Wound Up Reviews channel. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing this beauty of a Rolex Datejust. This is the Datejust with the reference number 16013 and this specific model features the tapestry or tapestry uh, dial which is just gorgeous. But before we get into the review itself, I would just like to say a huge thank you to Leif for lending in this watch for me to review. I really do appreciate it, so thank you very much. Um, so yeah, now let's get into the watch itself. And I figured that we can begin by uh, getting some measurements on the watch. So let's begin with the diameter of the watch. As many of you guys know, this is a 36 millimeter watch. In terms of the thickness of the watch, it's about 12.8 and the lug to lug distance seems to be about 44 millimeters. So it's a very classic size of a watch and I think it will fit many wrists very well. Even my large seven and a half inch or 19.5 centimeter wrist, it fits quite nicely on. So it is a nice size, I do like it and it is the perfect size for this kind of a watch design. So now let's get into the case of the watch and then the dial and then the bracelet and then we will touch briefly on the movement of the watch and then end this review with a pros and cons list. As for the case here, we have a two-tone case. So we have a bit of 18 karat uh, yellow gold and we do also have mostly a 904L stainless steel. In terms of the gold, you will find uh, some gold here on the fluted bezel and on the crown of the watch. And then the rest is of course 904L stainless steel. The case has a very simple design to it. We have brushing on the top of the lugs and then the sides of the case. Uh, we have a polished finish as per usual with Oyster case Rolexes. We do have uh, drilled lug holes, which I do think is fantastic. And I would love to see more brands implement this into their modern watches. The case is water resistant down to 100 meters or about 330 feet, partially thanks to a screw down crown. The crown is, as mentioned before, made out of 18 karat gold. In terms of threading, it is extremely smooth. And also winding this watch is is also very, very smooth and satisfying. If you pull out the crown one step, you will have uh, the instant uh, date change, as you can see there, or the uh, quick set date. And then if you pull it out one step further, you get hacking seconds, as I will show you here. As you can see, the seconds hand of the watch has stopped and I can now set the time precisely. So. Yeah, even though this is quite an old watch, it does have these contemporary features, which is great to see. So let's just screw the crown back in, which is done very smoothly. In terms of the case back, we have a very simple, you know, standard Rolex case back. There's basically nothing to see here. Although this is a great spot to engrave something into. So I guess that's the plus of having this clean a case back. So now let's get into this dial of this gorgeous watch. Now this watch has what people call the tapestry dial or the tapestry dial. And I will show you some close up pictures of this dial because it is amazing. It is kind of champagne colored and you have um, kind of a pattern within a pattern. It really is great attention to detail and Rolex has done a great job with this dial. We have gold hands and gold markers, making this dial not a very legible one. Although of course that's not what you're after here. This is not a tool watch. This, this is more of a sporty dress watch. So legibility is not at the top of your list in terms of requirements. In terms of the markers, we have some nice faceted features on them. And in terms of the hands themselves, these are the standard, or I guess you could say classic Datejust hands. They work perfectly with this watch and they just look fantastic. There's not a whole lot to say about this dial because it is such a classic, everybody knows it. And pretty much everyone loves this dial. Oh, and also of course we do have these Cyclops here on top of the acrylic crystal. And for the date window, we have a background matching the dial 
which is fantastic. Now let's get into the bracelet of this watch. Now this is a fantastic piece. Oh, this bracelet is, uh, well, I gotta say, I am in love with this bracelet. It is not the most sturdy bracelet in the world. It is not the most, you know, it is not the highest end bracelet if compared to modern watches. It is, it is not the most solid bracelet. It's not the most, you know, well-built bracelet, but it is extremely comfortable and it is pretty much the best looking bracelet that I've ever seen in real life. On these models, you do have solid end links, which is great. And as for the clasp, we have the standard Rolex Datejust clasp here. It does feature some uh, micro adjusting. And as for the inner part of the clasp, we have some stamped metal. It is not the most sturdy construction in the world although it is definitely going to hold up very well, as it has been over the past almost 40 years. And of course, this is a two-tone bracelet, so the mid parts of this bracelet is made out of 18 karat gold, although it is kind of not solid, as you can see here. Um, so it's, it's, it's not that heavy, actually, which I think is great, and it just wears perfectly on the wrist. And also, of course, as you can see here, it does have the famous... Jubilee bracelet stretch. So now as for the movement that's ticking along inside of this watch, we have the Rolex Caliber 3035. It is a 27 joule movement beating at 28,800 vibrations an hour with a decent power reserve of 50 hours. It is chronometer certified. We have a quick set date and we also do have hacking of the seconds hand. So this watch overall is a fantastic watch. This is a classic of a Rolex piece. Um, in terms of its pros, I definitely have to say the dial is a huge pro. The movement is a big pro. I mean, it is a solid workhorse of a movement. Um, it has stood up against the test of time and it is, it, yeah, it's, it's just a great movement. Um, the fluted bezel is beautiful. The case size I think is fantastic. And the bracelet has also has got to be one of this watch's major pros. It is a fantastic and very comfortable bracelet. In terms of the cons, it was very hard to find any cons on this watch. If I have to mention some, I would like to say that the legibility of the dial is not perfect. The construction of the bracelet is not very solid, although that also is part of its charm. And yeah, there's not a whole lot else to say about the cons of this watch. In terms of the movement accuracy, this watch is performing fantastic. Um, it has been going about plus two seconds per day. So that is great. No complaints there. Now let's put the watch on my rather large seven and a half inch and 19.5 centimeter wrist to show you how it wears and then end the review on that note. So today I am wearing my Seiko SBDC 065 diving watch and we are changing sizes here. This watch is 44 millimeters in diameter and that watch, the Rolex is 36. So let's see the difference. Okay, and there you have it. Here is the 36 millimeter date just on my rather large wrist. I know to some of you guys it will look too small, but I think it looks fantastic. I mean, I don't really like the Datejust 41. I think the size of it just doesn't fit the Datejust DNA. I mean, in my eye, the Datejust has to be 36 millimeter. It's just the perfect size for this watch. So I think it looks great. I think it wears fantastically. Um, the bracelet is just amazing. It looks so good and it is probably the most comfortable bracelet that I've ever put on my wrist. And yeah, I just have to say overall, this watch is, is spectacular. There is not a whole lot about it to complain about. So uh, yeah, what do you guys think about this watch? Please do feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it. And with that said, I'll see you in my next videos. Bye bye.